Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU, and today we have something very important to discuss in the world of iOS as well as jailbreaking. This morning, Apple has released what is hopefully going to be one of the last iOS 9 updates to the general public, being iOS 9.3.3 after five beta seeds. Now, you might be wondering, why is iOS 9.3.3 so important? Why did it get five betas, and how does it differ over its predecessor? We're going to get into all of that as well as how the firmware impacts jailbreaking, because believe it or not, it does in just a second but first if you guys want to obtain the wallpaper i have here on my iphone 6s plus down below in the description the very first link will be written information that just details what i'm going over now as well as contains this wallpaper so you guys can download it on your own all right now let's get into it first of all starting with ios 9.3.3 as an ios 9 update itself so how does ios 9.3.3 differ how does it improve ios 9 and how does it get us ready for ios 10. now these are all absolutely great questions to start let's go over the changes now believe it or not 9.3.3 really does not feature any changes over ios 9.3.2 that are noticeable by the end user apple is merely focused on stability with iOS 9.3.3 and just improving iOS 9.3.x in general because even after 9.3.1 and 9.3.2, 9.3 still had some general issues and Apple wanted to make sure that they got it right this time around with iOS 9.3.3 so that they can divert the majority of their development resources now to developing for iOS 10 which should receive its third beta shortly. So while 9.3.3 merely fixes minor bugs, by the way, no real significant significant bugs have been rectified in this firmware. It doesn't feature anything that you as the end user will really be able to notice or distinguish from its predecessor 9.3.2. So this is a very interesting time and it can actually be compared to last year's iOS 8.3 as well as 8.4 releases. Remember 8.4 was really just 8.3 with Apple Music. That's all it featured and we actually received a jailbreak for 8.3 as well as 8.4. So that was an absolute absolutely fantastic time last year and it was roughly a year ago to date. So we're going to get into that in just a little bit when we talk about how 9.3.3 may influence the release of the next untethered jailbreak utility. So up first in jailbreaking, can we expect a brand new jailbreak for 9.3.3? See that's a really great question and unfortunately we don't have the direct answers and let me tell you why. Taiji as well as Pangu, the only two developers currently active as well as verified on the jail jailbreak scene do not give any sort of ETAs, announcements, or anything. They just drop jailbreak utilities when they're ready and when they're available to be released. So we won't hear word from either group until a new jailbreak is actually ready and until they're ready to drop it themselves. Now it's really interesting that we did not see a jailbreak for iOS 9.3.2 because as hacker Luca Tedesco highlighted, there is a very powerful Safari based bug in play for iOS 9.3.2 that isn't on iOS 9.3.3. And while Luca Tedesco himself didn't discover it, again, it is a very powerful WebKit based exploit that is essentially capable of delivering a jailbreak very similar to Jailbreak Me, meaning it would be deployable through Safari. Now I can think of a reason why they wouldn't use this in a jailbreak for iOS 9.3.2. Remember, it's patched in 9.3.3. The only thing that really is logical at this point is that they've already been working on a brand new jailbreak utility for longer than when that bug dropped. What that means is that they've already spent so much time in the development process that they don't wanna essentially have to scrap what they've been working on thus far and go backwards and kind of reinvent the wheel, so to speak, because there's probably only going to be one last iOS 9 jailbreak before we start to move into iOS 10 and iOS 10 jailbreak break utilities. So they don't want to have to redo their work and incorporate an older exploit when instead they could just focus on iOS 9.3.3. Keep in mind that's a working theory of mine and what actually furthers that theory is the fact that iOS 9.3.3 is likely going to be one of the last iOS 9 updates considering how much work Apple has just poured into this minor iOS 9.3.x release. However, one thing to note and add on to that is that if a 9.3.3 jailbreak does indeed drop, then and of course, Apple will issue a minor firmware to patch said jailbreak utility, just like they did last year with iOS 8.4.1 
All that update did was just patch the Taiji jailbreak, but there will be a window of opportunity, of course, as with every single jailbreak, for you to get in there and jailbreak the latest firmware. So that's really the main reason why I think Taiji and or Pangu hasn't released a jailbreak utility for iOS 9.3.2 when they pretty much could, utilizing that extremely powerful WebKit vulnerability that again could lead to an untethered jailbreak deployable via Safari, which of course would be preferred by so many users, it would make so much sense to release that jailbreak unless they're crazy the only reason why they're doing this is because they already have something that they're working on and they have something up their sleeves now not to get off track but this definitely relates to it considering ios 9.3.3 is going to be one of the last 9.x updates iOS 10 and jailbreaking is definitely something we need to keep our eyes on moving forward. Now, interestingly enough, inside of iOS 10 beta 1, Apple left the kernel unencrypted for 64-bit devices, and since then, it's been discovered that in iOS 10 beta 2, Apple's left even more unencrypted, and of course now it is for 32-bit devices as well, and interestingly enough, the bootloaders for 32-bit devices are also unencrypted inside of iOS 10. So what this means is that hopefully now, once we get past iOS 9.3.x, and once we finally are relieved with a brand new jailbreak utility, that jailbreaks going into the future will be substantially easier to actually develop for because not only Taiji and Pangu will be able to uncover more exploits going forward, hopefully thanks to the unencrypted kernel, but also non-jailbreak developers will be able to do the same and possibly contribute to jailbreaking, even if it's unbeknownst to them. Because even though it will help jailbreakers a little bit, it will also allow other developers to actually uncover bugs inside of iOS's kernel, and hopefully that way they will be able to report bugs, and guess what? If Apple publishes said bugs, or other individuals and developers publish said bugs, then jailbreakers can kind of work backwards and utilize and possibly exploit said potential kernel bugs. So this could be huge for jailbreaking going into the future for iOS 10, but what we need first is an iOS 9.3.x jailbreak, and as I mentioned before, it really bodes well for us that we didn't see a jailbreak for iOS 9.3.2, even though the majority of you probably don't think so. And of course, the reason for that is because we had such a powerful and easy to implement exploit for iOS 9.3.2, the only thing that makes sense why they didn't use it is because they've already been working on something. Of course, I want to wrap up this segment by kind of looping back to what I said previously. Neither Taiji nor Pangu will give guidance to what they're working on in advance. They'll just drop jailbreak. So all we can really do is kind of look at the past as well as what's going on currently, analyze the situation, and try to figure out where things are headed. So what's said in this video is my analysis. I really need you guys to understand that. Also, before we wrap up here, I wanted to mention something else of paramount importance. Now, iOS 9.3.3 and 9.3.3 Point two are definitely hot firmwares right now, and so many individuals are on either of the two that they're looking for a jailbreak constantly, pretty much 24-7, and in light of that, new scams are starting to pop up and propagate the web, targeting those individuals, and if they're desperate enough, they may end up falling for them. So I actually created this video here not long ago, and I highly recommend watching through it, because in said video, I discuss the jailbreak scams, as well as a very helpful link for you to utilize to cross-reference any potential jailbreaks that you come across to see whether or not they're fake. Let me just tell you in advance though, unless Taiji or Pangu releases something and you come across a website that looks like it is a jailbreak, then it's probably fake. But either way, definitely check out this video if you have any questions on that. And finally, to wrap up here, I just wanted to address reports coming from MOSEC, the Mobile Security Conference of 2016, which of course was held by Pangu, and the event played host to some really key and influential security talks. And during said conference, it was actually reported that Pangu held a Q&A session where they announced a jailbreak for 9.3.2 would be released one week following the conference, which took place on July 1st. Now, at the time, I created a video on it, and again, in said video, I stated that they supposedly answered that question, but that we did not have direct video confirmation of said Q&A session. So we were really just taking the word of individuals that attended the conference, and guess what? That was just a rumor that was going on at 
at that time. I've already talked about it kind of briefly in some past videos, as well as more in depth on jailbreak and hacks forms, but I just wanted to state that in this video. That was just a rumor. What we're really looking forward to now is of course, hopefully an iOS 9.3.3 jailbreak. And as far as whether you should update, I don't care what firmware you're on. It could be iOS 9.3.2 or even 9.2.1. Do not update until we have a jailbreak released because the lower you are, even if jailbreak developers are intending to target the latest public firmware again, 9.3.3, the better the chances of you being able to jailbreak. So stay where you're at. Do not update until a jailbreak is released. Remember, there will always be a window of opportunity, no matter how small it is, to jailbreak following the release of a brand new utility. So stay where you're at until the jail breaks out. All right, now that completely wraps up today's video. If you have absolutely any questions whatsoever, just be sure to post them on the jailbreak and hacks forms found at jailbreakandhacks.com forward slash forms. It's incredibly easy to sign up. It only takes a matter of seconds. I will have a link down below in the description for you guys and our community that we have going on there is absolutely great. And you'll get any and all of your jailbreak related questions answered there. Try not to leave them in the the comment section because chances are good I won't be able to answer them on jailbreak and hacks forms I will so just be sure to check out the forms there of course also click the subscribe button below next to my channel name if you have yet to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter that way you'll be completely in the loop anytime I release anything concerning jailbreaking whether it's new information or of course my jailbreak tutorial once a new tool is out and until next time this is ICU signing out join the iCracker iDevice community on patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.